amend the bill to the House. The question is that the motion be agreed to. Mr Speaker. Honourable Clayton Cosgrove. Uh, look, I join on behalf of the Labour Party with the, the Minister in, the, uh, the, the, in respect of the bipartisan nature of, in respect of this bill. Uh, it is indeed about uh, promoting efficient markets, confidence, investor confidence in markets, uh, fair uh, market outcomes, and uh, to the best extent this Parliament can, attempting to ensure that those who are charged uh, as company directors with uh, facilitating the investments uh, of others uh, take those, and in large part they do of course, take the, that duty of care very seriously. And I think it's noteworthy to uh, touch on the nature of directorships. It is, there was a time when uh, being a director of a company was a, a reasonably blasé sort of uh, option to take, and by that I mean uh, People did it, um, uh, and there weren't, uh, and it was done in good faith, and there weren't a lot of uh, a huge set of draconian responsibilities uh, around uh, a directorship going back some years. We now know that becoming a company director is um, uh, can be an onerous task, is a specialist task, and now even prior to this bill, but certainly post this bill, being a director comes with a huge burden of responsibility a large amount of accountability and even more so in terms of disclosure and transparency through this legislation. And we know the history of this. We know that in the last uh, four years there have been 61 uh, finance companies that have failed, uh, the most recent being, of course, South Canterbury Finance, uh, you know, bailed out to the tune of $1.6 billion in respect of taxpayers' funds. Now. Um, it was interesting uh, in the Commerce Committee this morning on another piece of legislation, but without getting into that whilst we're in public session, we, we had a, an interesting discussion about risk and entrepreneurship and how the balance has to be struck that you don't want to cauterise or strangle entrepreneurship. You don't want to cauterise or strangle uh, entrepreneurship in terms of legitimate business risk-taking. And running a business, owning a business, uh, participating in the investment market by its very nature is risky. It's not a sure thing. Very few things in life are sure things and if they, as the old adage goes, if it smells and tastes like a sure thing, it generally isn't. Uh, and uh, so this bill seeks to strike a balance in terms of allowing entrepreneurship and appropriate decisions to be made, uh, for instance, by directors and others. Uh, that doesn't negate the fact that those decisions are uh, may not have a positive outcome. That is the nature of making business decisions. You risk, you get reward. Sometimes those decisions and those risks do not pay off because that is the nature of business. So I think it's just appropriate as we go through this to just note that. There is no such thing, as I say, as a sure bet, a sure investment, a sure thing. If there was, uh, I'm sure we'd have a far more wealthier population generally than we do now. Um, and it is important to note that you know, entrepreneurship, this country is built on entrepreneurship and uh, uh, built on appropriate uh, levels of risk uh, by appropriate and qualified risk takers. Now, uh, if we look back in, in the history, of course, the Capital Markets Task Force, which was set up under the previous government in 2008, moved to, to develop a, a blueprint and an action plan for the development of New Zealand's financial system. That is the genesis originally uh, for ultimately this bill. And uh, we're pleased that the government has taken this on. I know investors, given the sort of investment carnage that we've had, are crying out for uh, appropriate levels of disclosure, as the Minister said, and transparency and accountability. Because without confidence in our financial markets, uh, we will not achieve the level of investment that is required. Uh, and we will not prosper uh, and grow as an economy, as a country. And it is important, as the Minister said, uh, that these um, legislative frameworks uh, are in line uh, as best we can with our Australian brothers and sisters across the ditch, because effectively, in many of the, th in, in commercial terms, we are almost, almost uh, one market. So we had the Financial Task Force. We've now moved, uh, of course, to the, the 61 finance company collapses. 
uh, and no one wants to return to those days. Uh, it is interesting if you go through uh, the history of some of, uh, in, in terms of the, the sort of criminality that we've seen from some uh, in the recent past. A couple of my colleagues have noted, and I think the record shows it's probably correct, that when it comes to sort of white collar versus blue collar criminals, if you will, uh, the burglar versus uh, the uh, the white collar criminal uh, who, uh, uh, who who loses millions and millions of dollars of uh, the funds of the citizenry. It could be argued, I think, with a high degree of validity, that the burglar throughout our history has got a, a hell of a worse sentence and been dealt with in a far more severe way than many of our white-collar criminals uh, of the past. So the bill, as the minister said, does a, a number of things. It offers, uh, the, the, it offers uh, regulated financial products that are categorised as equities, securities, debt securities, managed investment products and derivatives based on the economic substance of the financial product, not just the legal form. In essence, again, uh, attempting to simplify and also create confidence in the market. Uh, the offer process, uh, as I've said, is modelled uh, in an equivalent way to Australia bringing us in line. There's a requirement for issuers to prepare a prospectus, an investment statement, that, will, that that requirement will be replaced with a requirement to prepare, uh, as the Minister noted, a single product uh, disclosure statement tailored to retail investors. Uh, that leads us to a point which I made, I think, in a previous debate, that whilst we have these pieces of legislation, there is also a need in, in, in tailor-making uh, documents so that retail investors can understand them, so that they're simple, <coughs> so that they're relatively transparent or as simple as you can whilst meeting legal obligations. There is also a note, and I note Simon Power did some work on this when he was Minister, there is also an ongoing need for a higher degree of resource into financial literacy in this country, and I mean no disrespect by that. Um, uh, for some of us who've had experience uh, in commercial areas, uh, these uh, interpretation of documents and in business investments, we have a level of confidence uh, that we can make judgments and perhaps have a greater understanding of the strictures and documentation surrounding these investments. For others in our community that haven't had that visibility or that experience, it is tougher for them to make uh, judgments. And again, I think we see uh, the 61 finance companies that collapsed, many in the community uh, thought that these were appropriate investments, that these were going to uh, provide uh, uh, wonderful financial riches, and uh, it just smelled too good. And uh, it's also incumbent upon this House, I think, and the Government to ensure that we have and that we are putting some resource into financial literacy, not just to uh, our adult population, but to those people who are at school so they can grow up having the confidence uh, to manage their own affairs and participate in investments. The, the bill provides, um, for instance, regulations to be made that will prevent products from being structured to avoid regulation. Uh, this happened, of course, in the case, the infamous case of Mark Byers and the infamous blue chip case, because investment scheme it was offered uh, offered interests in land. It was exempt from the Securities Act, uh, to the significant detriment, of course, of investors. Now, your average Joe in the street um, uh, looked at an investment like blue chip, thought this was a great deal. There was a great sell job on that. And people invested in good faith. Uh, I don't, th you know, there is always an element. I think uh, uh, when you come to investment decisions, I wouldn't say greed, but obviously people want to maximise their investments, and that often clouds judgment in terms of whether it's an appropriate risk and an appropriate level of investment. However, uh, in the case, of course, with blue chip, uh, you know, this was built as some great guilt edge deal, and people were hoodwinked. And you couldn't blame the citizenry for that. What this bill will do, not only in that case but in others, is simplify, make transparent, make more accountable uh, uh, a lot of the frameworks uh, and a lot of the schemes of arrangement so that investors can have greater confidence. Many, I'm sure, on both sides of the House will know constituents who've been burnt 
and won't be participating in an investment market uh, uh, as, uh, in, in these sorts of ways uh, as they have in the past, either because they've lost their life savings or because they just the confidence is shot to pieces uh, and they will look for uh, you know, simplified investments, uh, either in property or others, uh, that they know uh, and, uh, and trust. I'm sorry? Oh, well, we won't, we won't, we won't destroy Order. the atmosphere of the Order. paper, Time's sir. We, we, we support the legislation and look forward to its passage. Jonathan Young. Yeah, thank you, Mr Speaker. Uh, yeah, thank you very much for the contribution of the previous speaker. What a very convincing...